G'day, I'm Dave TTC and this is Dave's Cave. On today's episode, I'm going to share with you how I set up to make a rule or ruler in Lightburn to make on the laser. Now I have a client who has some historical timber uh, for a building, it's had some work done to it and they've salvaged some of the wood out of it and they want to make souvenirs. And so even to the smallest slithers of wood that have been cut, uh, in this case, I want me to make some rulers. I'm going to show you how I go about it. I've seen others do it. Um, some that I've seen, I don't believe are as quick and simple as the way I do it. You might find it's just the same as anyone else. But anyway, uh, I'll show you how I do it. And in this case here, I'm just going to have a look at what we've got. I've put a logo in there as well, so how I just alter it for the sake of the logo. Now, I've already done it. Let's come over to the computer. Oh, here we go. This is the file I've already got for what I've done for the stick shed. And we can see we've got a ruler there with their logo and a little bit of custom work with the scale and the numbers to work around the logo. I'm working with a limited size timber. I can't uh, have much more in the height so I've got to creep into the scale and move the numbers a bit it was a choice of either leave some numbers out and I thought no I think I can work around this so here we go we're going to grab it all and going to say hey Jude goodbye no 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 hey Jude Sorry, I can't see. Anyway, over here we've kept the logo. I'm duplicating the logo. I'm going to bring it over here and the period button to spin it round to the orientation I want. Now, what shall I start with? We'll start with... I'm not sure. I normally like to start with the box. Uh, that's going on. No, I'll start with the box. The reason I like to start with the box is because it gives me a straight line as a reference. So bang, box, we'll turn that into a toolpath and we're going to set the size. I want my rule to be 200 mil and I'm going to have 7 mil at each end. So that makes it a width or length of 214 and the height, the timber I've got varies anything from about 19 mil to 25, 26 mil. So I'm going to just work as 20 as a nominal and that's set. Now, when I go to select my pencil, now you will have noticed, just come back, is I hit the select button first because I was on the box that I just drew. If I go straight to pencil and go to draw, it ends up being in a toolpath, which I don't want. All right, so we'll do that again. We'll imagine that I've gone from the box and I've gone straight to pencil. And I think, okay, I'm going to select the color I want, which in this case is red. It's changed my toolbox or my toolpath to red as well. So just a little thing that you need to be mindful of here is when you've drawn your box using the box option, it's highlighted. I'll draw another box and I'll just show you. Now I'll go to select and see my box is still selected because it's the last thing I did. So I go to select and then I click on nowhere. Then I go to my pencil and then I select my color. Now I can draw and it doesn't affect anything else. All right, and what I'm doing is I'm gonna just line up there. And so now I've got a nice straight line. I'm gonna go back to select and I'm going to, oh, I got that just the height I wanted, 10 mil. Um, all right, that's good, we'll go with 10 mil. Um, I'm starting at zero and I want 10 and I want them at one millimeter increments. So we'll just 
get rid of that. So they're going to be at one millimeter spacings. But I also want to have a start point which is zero, so that means I need 11. Now in this case here, I actually want to have maybe three beforehand, uh, three before zero. So all up I want 14. Whoops. 14. Okay. I'm going to zoom in on this just so you can see what we're doing. So if we imagine that's our 10, I'm going to hit shift. 9, 8, 7, 6, skip 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, skip 0, uh, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3 is already um, selected. I'm going to take all of them, we're on unlocked, and I want the height to be 5. Tab. Okay, let's go back. I want to go up here and select the top box because I want it all to stay lined up there. Now I'm going to select 5 and either tab or enter will do the same thing. There we go, we've got everything where we want it. Now here I'm going to select that one and I want that one to be 7. None of this mucking around, selecting one at a time and adjusting all the length. Let's try and do it quickly and easily. Now we will select the other way. We'll take those ones and I want to make the scale go all the way down I'm going to say 21. If I need one more, I'll have to add one more. I think 21 is right. And now the spacing will be 10. Now you can do this in Imperial. You've just got to change your settings to Imperial and do everything accordingly. Uh, but the principle is the same. Now let's zoom out and we should just go past the end by a little bit. We do. Well, we would if that was spaced. It's not spaced. So we're going to zoom in here. I'm going to leave one, two, three. So we're going to take these ones out here and just hit delete. Now, we're going to take all of these. We're going to group it temporarily. Hit shift, select the box, and we're going to center align. Okay, now we've got the scale in the center of our piece of wood. Next thing is to do our numbers. So I've selected Aerial Round. I think it's a good choice for this sort of thing. We're going to stick a zero over there and we're going to change that to a blue layer. And I want the height to be four millimeters. There we go. All right, just zooming in on that a bit. We'll take that and we'll just bump it up a little bit, roughly center. Holding down shift, we'll select that one there, which has not been ungrouped. So we'll deal with that now. We'll ungroup that. Okay, select the zero, select that one, and we'll center that side to side. There we go. Now we'll select our number and we will simply put in 21 of them. They're all centered. Instead of doing them individually, now again we've got that on our center spot. All we need to do is just come over to each one and we just delete and replace the number. There we are, we've got a 200 mil roll, which is all I'm after in this case. Now we we'll grab our logo and bring that up. 
I'm going to change that to blue. Put on the same layer, and we're going to set the height of that to ten. Oops. We will lock the aspect ratio, and then set that to ten. Beautiful. And we're going to grab our one and our two, and just bump that. Whoops. I meant to grab them both, but doesn't matter. Do them one at a time. Bump them up out of the way, and let's zoom in and see what we're doing. And my material is a little bit bigger than what I've said, so I'm going to drop that there. And I might make a height. 9.5 just to give me a little bit more space on the 0 and 3. Now that one there, I'm going to just bump that down a bit. Actually, no, we need to bump that down a bit more than that. Let's bring our 1 down. I'm going to have our 1 about there. I'm using the command button to nudge it down and that looks that looks pretty even there. Now we're going to grab that and shorten it. That and put that a similar distance off the two. Alright. Now we're going to take these in pairs and what I want to do is it needs to be shorter than oh, that one also needs to be I'm going to take that one down and we're going to take I'll leave that one where it is what I want to do is have this one Okay. Alright, we want to be one either side of our scale for the one, which is there. That's better. And we're going to make that shorter. Then we want to have sort of a straightish line up to there. So we're going to take that one, that one, and we're going to do that. Take that one and that one. Oops, hold shift. Not looking at the keyboard while I do this. And there. That one can actually. I'll probably leave that one at seven actually. So we'll just put that back to seven. All right. And what we can do just put that back to there now seven. Okay, make sure it grows the right way. What we can do is we can select those ones. These ones first. We'll take those ones, we'll delete it. Take those ones, we'll delete it. And we'll take those ones and those ones hitting the shift. And we can just pop that over and duplicate it. Okay, and now we have our scale, and so it's nice and easy to see that where our 1 and 2 centimeter is, or 10 and 20 millimeters, so I read them as millimeters. Yeah, looks good. We're ready to go. 
Now, what we can do is we can grab all of our numbers. And we can group them and we can grab our other two numbers and group them with that group. So we'll just check. Yep, they all move together. I might just move them out of the way so that we can get our scale. We'll get all of our scale and we will group that. Pop that back up. I'm going to group everything. Oh, I'm happy with that. Now on my laser, I want to actually flip this around to, to do it. So we'll just hit space, space, and I'm set up on my honeycomb. If you've seen my Calibrate the Honeycomb video, I have my honeycomb set up so I can use the scale as a direct reference for absolute coordinates. So I'm just going to pop that down into the corner. I have my piece of wood that I prepared earlier, this one here. You might be able to make out a slight bevel. Uh, so that's the top edge, which I'm going to have down to the scale. So let's go pop this over on the laser. Okay, so moving over to the laser, we can just pop our board in. You might be able to make the bevel out on there. I'm going to pop that in there and we will power it up. I'm just using the laser from scratch so I'll get better home. Are we connected? There we go. Home. And then I nudge down one, cross one, because I've set my home to the back corner. There's a video down in the description. You can see why I've done that. And now we're ready to start. By changing my home position to a custom position, it won't take off from the corner. I've got to nudge it once in each direction. And now I can hit start and we're off. So there we go. From even a little bit of a spiel at the beginning, including all of that. And then moving over to the computer. The total video time, and I'm going to edit this out so it's going to be less, but the total video time by the time I pulled that out of the laser was only about 25 minutes. So you can design and do it in 25 minutes. The actual laser work on that one was just a bit over 4 minutes. So 15, 20 minutes, 20 minutes to design it. You could possibly do it in 15 minutes. Uh, if you said 20 minutes on the outside, and then if you're going to make lots of them to reproduce them, they're about four minutes each. You can take that and then just take off sections if you want to make a smaller roll. I'm going to do a 10 centimeter, 15 centimeter, 20 centimeter. They want a 30, but I think for the size of that timber, I don't think a 30 is going to look good or practical. Oh, maybe I'll do one for them, but um, I think a 20 is good. It's a nice size. You can slip it in your pocket and use it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you stuck to the end. Please like, subscribe, and share. Just a little button down there. It's not hard. Just give me a thumbs up, please. Bye for now.